Okay, so the first thing we're going to kind of do is if you had your filament holder, have you constructed that? And so it kind of looks like this. Um, so they're going to be kind of like brown paper. Yeah, perfect. You already have it put together. Awesome. That'll save us time. Okay. Okay, so what I want to talk about a little bit is kind of the design process and what you're going to go over with your kids in order to create that design process. So while I kind of construct this, I'll talk to you about it and go along. Um, so what we're really going to focus on the most is talking about our CAD programs and how we're going to use them. So what, what grade are you teaching? You're in high school, correct? Yeah, I have like 10th to 12th graders. Okay, so 10th to 12th graders, they can use something like Tinkercad or SketchUp, but they can also utilize a program called Onshape, and I feel like it's much more kind of critical for them to use a traditional CAD program. So that's going to involve creating 2D sketches on a plane or surface and then extruding those to create the object itself. Um, and right. I think definitely the way that we want to go for, sorry, for those students that are a little bit older. Um, what, you know, kind of experience do you have with CAD programs? I actually taught it for two years. Uh, we have a program called Inventor. Um, awesome. And it, it creates STL files. Is that the same file you need for this? Yes, it is. So okay. we need an STL file. We need to export as an STL, and then we put it in a slicer that then transfers it to the uh, to the printer. So that's exactly what we want. Uh, what, what year of, man, I am fumbling today. What year of Inventor do you have? Uh, I can get the latest one. I think I have 2016. Okay, see, I'm really used to two, 2015, so I figured I'd just ask for reference. Um, I yeah. know it's as STL, but 2015 is a little weird, and it makes it where you have to hit, like, print, and then print as a 3D model. Uh, that's how I get to the STL files for it. But as long as you know how to get there, then it should be good. Okay. So. All right. So yeah, you kind of know the difference of the STL files, which is sterile lithography. It's going to be like a triangle mesh that makes up that object. So you take this object to separate it into triangles in order to recreate it in a uh, 3D environment. Is, what you're doing. is that something that we do? Or is that something like the program does? Yeah, that's something the program does. Like when you export your 3D part or the IPT to STL, it's creating triangles of that object. And so the object is basically transformed into that. And then we use a slicer to tell the computer or tell the motors on the printer in order to move around. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So designing is pretty much going to be the hardest part, but I feel like you kind of got that under wraps. The next part that we're going to go over then is going to be on our little micro SD cards. And so we're going to install a program called Cura. And Cura is the slicer that we like to use for our printers. And it's actually made by Ultimaker and it's completely open source free. Okay. If you go ahead and find your little USB here. one in the side right mm -hmm. and we're just gonna plug that into the computer so I can't really hear you right now okay um, is it just loud in the classroom or can it, is it hard to hear me specifically it's hard to hear you I'm gonna turn on my volume a little bit okay sure um, I, I'll try and uh... is that better yeah that's better now awesome okay cool all right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in our little micro SD card, and okay. we're gonna pull up the files of it. And so it should be called NWA3D. And screen share with you so you can kind of follow with me. When I screen share, it is gonna full screen uh, whatever I'm looking at or like this camera right here. So up in the top corner so you can uh, uh, minimize the full screen so you can follow along with me. Okay. All right, so we're going to have the NWA3D folder, and we should have these files in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Cura, and we're going to double-click there, and then we're going to install the application. So we're going to install Cura 15046. And just go through the install process, you know, going to hit next and so on and so forth. And then pop up to this screen, and it's called the First Time Run Wizard screen. Right. Whenever you get there, uh, pause, let me know, and we'll go through it together. Okay, I'm there. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and click next, and then we're going to click other, and then we're going to choose Mendel. Mendel is the operating system for our printers. And we're going to click next and finish. Okay, now we're going to get the big screen. It's going to say 15046. 
six and there should be a little robot in there. Um, we're probably going to load out that robot here in a second and uh, load in our own model to kind of go over that function itself. Uh, so we're going to change all the settings over here on the left hand side. That's the first thing that we're going to do for Akira. So we need to change for the A5 specifically. So what we're oh, am I still like, am I still downloading? Oh, it's still uh, going installing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and if you hit that first time run wizard again, uh, just let me know and I can kind of talk you through it. Right now it says the drivers are installing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The first time run wizard pops up right after all the uh, drivers install and you actually first try to boot Cura. Okay, I think it's loading now. Cool. So first time run wizard's up, select language, English. Okay, after it said select your machine. Yeah, click other down at the bottom. Okay. And then click on Mendel as the operating system. Uh, Mendel, okay. And that's what the printers use. And then you're gonna click next and finish. And then it should bring up the screen I'm at right now. Uh, all right, I'm on the same screen you are. Awesome. So everything on the left-hand side panel is going to be print settings. So you can manipulate these as you see fit as you get more comfortable with 3D printing but we're gonna give you a general basis to start from and go off of there. So I'm gonna kind of step through these and explain them. If you have any questions about them, don't hesitate to stop me and ask me questions, okay? Okay. How do I see my screen though? Cause like you said, yours is full screen. Um, so go ahead and like, so you're, you still have mine full screen? Yeah. Okay, then you should be able to go up into the top and there should be a little drop down box and you should be able to click more and exit full screen. Got it. Okay. That work for you? Yep. Okay. Okay. Sweet. So on the left hand side panel, we're going to first have layer height and layer height is going to determine the quality of our print. So not okay. pretty prints for these printers are typically 0 0.1 millimeters. And then we can go also to 0 0.3 millimeters as a low quality print. And okay. This general set, we're going to use a 0 0.2. And what the layer height actually is, is you're going to have a layer of plastic and then it's going to put another one on top and it's going to be how close those are to each other. Right, okay. And then we're going to have our shell thickness and we're going to change that value to actually 0 0.8. Shell okay. thickness is actually going to be the outside shell of any model that you have. So anything for the outside, like a cylinder or something, it's going to be the shell that goes all the way around conference okay it may have turned yellow on you but that's because we need to change something else to make it happy and so shell okay. thickness needs to be a multiple of the nozzle size we need to change down here at the very bottom of this little panel nozzle size to 0 0.4 okay so nozzle size is really important if you don't have the right nozzle size chosen it's going to really kind of mess with things so 0 0.4 is the one that we use not only for the A5, but also for the A31. And then we're gonna change the bottom and top thickness to 0 0.8. And that's gonna control basically the width of the bottom and top layers of the model that it prints off. So we're gonna make it completely um, it's symmetric from the sides to the top and bottom. Okay. Fill density and fill density is going to be how much percentage of infill is for the model. So if you to look at the inside of a 3D printed model, it does have space in it, and this is going to control how much space it's gonna have. We like to say anywhere five to 20% infill is a great setting. So I'm gonna go for the sake of speed, I'm gonna choose it to be 5% infill. But okay. also- so this is basically, you're telling it that it's gonna be hollow, right? right? So if you go 100%, it'll be completely solid. It will be completely solid, correct. Okay it will take a lot of time and it'll take a lot of materials. So that's kind of why they do the infill process. Got it, okay, thank you. All right. So print speed is gonna be 50 millimeters per second. We're gonna leave that at that same value. That's about the speed that we find is the best for our A5s to make them work, you know, at a best quality kind of deal. So it, they can go up to 60 millimeters per second, but you're starting to sacrifice a little bit of quality and a little bit of uh, the possibility to knock off your print itself. Sure, okay. Alrighty, next one we're gonna have printing temperature and we're gonna change that to 220 degrees Celsius. That's using PLA and PLA is typically 210, but 
due to the fact that there's a special composite in this PLA that makes it very flexible, it has to actually be heated up to a little bit of a higher temperature to be optimal to melt. Okay. Bed temperature on the A5s is we don't have a heat event, so we're going to set that to zero. What about the A31? So the A31 does have a heated bed, and if we wanted to use a heated bed, we'd say anywhere from like 50 to about 55 degrees Celsius is a good temperature for it. Okay, and then why would you want to use the heated bed? So the heated bed helps it to not warp. And what warping is, is if you have like a very flat model, and then you know, you're know you having it print out, and you're having corners kind of peel up like this, right, okay. that's called warping. And thanks to a heated bed, what happens is it reduces the time or it increases the time that it, it is cooling off so it stays flat longer rather than cooling and end up bending into itself. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay, so the next one's gonna be support type. And we like to say everywhere for support type just to make sure that our models are printing off correctly if anything should happen. Now this is uh, something that you can very much choose. Um, uh, if you feel like the model doesn't really need support, but it's generating some anyways, maybe turn it off and see how it comes out. But you can't print in midair is the idea of supports. Okay. Right. Right. Platform adhesion type. That's another way to help from warping. Um, we recommend only using brim. Raft uses just a lot of plastic and it consumes a lot of time. So we're going to leave that on time because we won't need any for this model. Okay. All right, filament, it's going to be 1.75 in diameter. You can also check that on the side of your filament. Here I have some toner plastic. Um, you may have plastic, but there will be a size, and it'll say 1.75 millimeters. Got it. And so that's how you can check that. Okay. So these are things that do I have to change every time I print, or, I mean, no. obviously the diameter has to change, but... So you won't have to change this every time you print. This is like the first time setup that you have to change. So okay. this save the settings per user profile. So if someone else logs into your laptop and they open Cura for the first time, they're gonna have to change these settings. Okay, thank you. So like if your kids, if you have a class that comes in and you set it all up in the first class and then you have a new class come in, you're gonna have to set it up all over again. But it gives you the opportunity to kind of explain what's going on with all of these settings to your kids. Okay, cool. Right. Flow percentage, we're going to leave it at 100%. So it's going to be the material extruded is multiplied by this value. And hopefully, if everything's optimal, you know, we want it to print at 100%. That's the idea. All right, so that's all of the settings for the A5 and also very similar to the A31. The only other thing we may change on this would be the bed temperature like we talked about earlier. Okay? Okay. Next one we're going to do, we're going to click up here in the top left toolbar and we're going to grab machine and go to machine settings. And this is gonna pull up all of the values for like our build area. So this is gonna help us to define this section of our build plate. And so that's where okay. it's actually going to print something. So we actually need to change the maximum width, depth, and height. So the first one, we're gonna change it to 125 millimeters, which is right around five inches. And then 150 millimeters for the depth, which is about six inches. And then the height is gonna be 100, which is right around four. And then we want to unclick heated bed for the A5 because that's the one we're actually doing right now. Then we want to change all of these values to zero. Are they zero on yours? Yeah, they're all zero down on mine. Yeah, I'm not sure why mine are not zero. So I'm going to change that real quick and change the machine name so we know what we're working with. So name, and I'm just going to type in NWA 3D. Okay, if we wanted to, right here in this same screen, we can do the settings for the A31. So if we wanna go ahead and do the A31 settings, just so you know that you have those, we can click add machine, back to the new machine wizard. We're gonna go through this. Okay, so we're gonna go other, next, and then Mendel, and finish. Got so it. the same thing that we did last time. But this time we're going to change our maximum width, depth, and height to 300 by 100 by 400. Okay, I'm with you. Then we leave the heated bed on and we 
machine name, and let's name that the NWA 3 31 Okay, and then we should hit OK, and it's all good. So this is going to be our A31 build plate, a 12 by 16. And we can also, in order to switch back to the A5, because that's the one we're going to be working with the most. So notice the values on the left-hand side did change, so you will want to go reset those. Okay. A5, but if we click here on machine, and on NWA 3D A5 at the top, it'll set those values again for us. Got it. Cool. So that's you swap between printers. Cool? Cool. So now we're gonna kind of manipulate our models and go through a little bit of that. So I'm gonna actually delete this little robot dude. You can just uh, right click on the guy and click delete object. Gone. There's also some other functions in there that we can uh, explore here in a minute. So we're gonna click load and we can go to our little SD card we plugged in earlier and we can go to the STL files. Oh, sorry, so you click load, then you did, went where? We're gonna, I went to the SD card. So NWA 3D SD card. Okay. Cool. And then we're going to go to STL files, and then we're going to grab, we can either do the dice or the keychain, which would you like? Let's do the dice. All right. So we're going to go ahead and plop the dice inside there, and notice that it's yellow. So that means it's happy and it can print it. If it's gray like that, it means it's not capable of printing it. Okay. That's just like moving it off the build plate and it kind of gets mad. All right. So it perfectly in the center again. That's another function of right clicking, and I can click center on platform. Okay. and split objects into parts and then we have down here in the bottom left we're going to have rotate scale and mirror i can go over those with you if you would like so rotate is going to pull up like three axes right okay, mine, mine won't pop up those little icons okay click on the object first and then try and see got it okay that help yep Cool. And then, of course, scaling, you're going to be able to either scale it uniformly and keep the proportions, or you can actually scale it without uniform, and you can scale it kind of however you want. Um, so How did you get the scale? How would you get the scale? Oh, that's okay. So it's, it's the second one over. Got you. Okay. And then you also have mirrors, so you can, like, mirror it on any axis. Got you. Okay. Okay. And then, so that's kind of the three functions that we like to use and that are always there. And then cool. in the top left, you notice it says toolpath to SD kind of thing, and it has 12 minutes. That's what mine says. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, mine's too. That's the time that it's going to take for it to print, the amount of material that it's going to use in printing. Okay. okay. And then one last thing to kind of go over is going to be view mode. And so that's in the top right-hand corner. And the thing we like to use in view mode is called layers. So once we click on layers, it's going to actually generate the toolpath that the printer is going to use in order to create the object, right? And so okay. we can through each of these layers in order to see like the interior infill that it's going to have. And so this is a great function to kind of check supports or check um, how your model is going to end up making itself. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now we can save to SD card. So we can either click here on the toolpath to SD or we can go to file and save G code. And G code's what the printer is going to read off in order to use it. Okay. Right. I'm gonna click save G code, so I save it in the right file, and I'm just gonna put it in the main file of our SD card. Now, is that a, will this, the SD card hold a lot of files? I mean, is it gonna run out of space? Um, so, for instance, uh, the SD card is like an eight gigabyte, and you check the file size that we just put onto it. So if I right click, we check properties here. This is a 427 kilobyte. So it can hold a lot of different files. Yeah, cause, I mean, if I have like 100 students and they all have something like two inches by two inches, like a dice like this to make. Oh, yeah. It'll it hold all of them. Right? Okay. Yeah, it'll hold all of them because that may end up being close to like uh, two gigs maybe, right? And we're still working with an eight gig drive. And so yeah. that should work fine for you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Cool. So the next thing that we need to do is we just need to eject it for any safe removal. And then that was the process of slicing. So we kind of talked a little bit about design and you know how Inventor works and kind of going through that. And you said you knew how to export the STL files, which is great. And that's what we just put into Kira, right? And then 
Now all we did was we set our Cura set settings and we kind of manipulated it how we want. And then all we'd have to do now is transfer to the printer with our SD card and then print. So to transfer, we're gonna grab this little SD here and it's directly under the button of our A5. It's a spot to slide it into. Okay. Here, let me stop my screen share, sorry. One sec. So right here, if you need a little visual. Did I set mine up wrong? What do you mean? It should be right under the button. So here's the button. Oh, you pulled the card out? Yeah, I pulled the card out. So you pulled the little card out of your USB? Sorry. So you pulled the card out? Yes, yes, yes. Right. And then okay. we're gonna take that, we're gonna slide it into that small little slot right there. And you should click in. Dude, that's awesome, okay. Yeah, and so that's gonna make these basically completely autonomous. The only thing they need now is to be plugged in and have the plastic in them, and that's all they need. Cool? Okay. So that's kind of the four steps to print. We're gonna design, we're gonna slice, transfer, and then actually click print on the printer. So that's our four steps there. Okay. Next, we're gonna kind of go over like troubleshooting and getting our printers ready because they were just shipped to you and you kind of, you know, they were in the boxes and anything can happen when they're in shipping, right? So we're gonna go over like first run errors and stuff like that. So the first thing I do is I just kind of want you to go ahead and plug it in. And so the fan should start running. That means we are pretty good on those motors and everything, right? Right. And we're going to want to check our motors. So we are going to want to check, check our plugins for our motors as well as our switches. And so generally they're in pretty close spots to each other. So I can kind of demonstrate here. So this is going to be the X motor and X limit switch. Right. Okay. And then we're going to have an E motor right here, which stands for extruder, which helps to push our plastic through. Okay. Right back. And then we're going to have a Z right here. And then we're going to have okay. our Y's just across from the Z. Right. Okay. Cool. So all of those should be plugged in. We should be happy. Next thing we may want to check is just our belts. Make sure the belts are at least a little bit taut so that we know that they aren't going anywhere and they can definitely move everything correctly. So these are just no, mirrors. So go ahead. Mine's not exactly like at a 90 degree angle. This part right here. It's kind of just a little off centered. Is that going to be a problem? Um, like, show it to me a little bit more so I can see it a little bit better. Like the arm from the base, it's like maybe like 88 degrees, 87 degrees. It's not a complete right angle. Is that going to be a problem? I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't, I don't see that it, it looks too tilted. Um, to kind of end up bowing like that, but I, I think it's fine. Okay. Well, that's something we can definitely test as we kind of go through the process of making it move and manipulate itself. We will notice if it's not doing something correctly. Okay. That's kind of the mechanical error, mechanical error part that we're going over right now for troubleshooting. Okay. Sure. Okay. Kind of like one of the four troubleshooting steps that we're going to go over. All right. So we feel good with the mechanical. Everything kind of moves. Like you can move your extruder back and forth. Yeah, mine's higher than yours is, though. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we'll adjust that here in a minute. So this is called the extruder assembly, so we can move that back and forth. And then also the build plate right here should be able to go forward and back. Right. Sweet. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to go over um, leveling the build plate. And build plate is probably one of the biggest troubleshooting steps. And the fact that you will probably have to do it often, especially to get not only yourself, but also your kids comfortable with doing it and getting good at it. It's just, you know, something over time that you get used to. So if you could grab a piece of paper, that would be excellent. So I need to find my piece of paper. And so there was also a pink slip that came with these. If you want to use that, that works too. Yeah, I got some. Right. 
Cool. Sounds good. And we're going to fold that hamburger style. Okay. Just like that. Okay. The next part we're going to do, we need to actually move the printer itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it go zero, 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 or go to the origin point. So we're going to click on the button once. We're going to go to setup. And then we're going to click on auto home. So click once and then go to setup and then click in again and go to auto home. And so I'm moving. Cool. So it should start moving and it's going to take a while since yours was up so high. The Z axis is the slowest motor to move just because that's what it crawls up through in order to be model. So, and then once it kind of gets okay. to that, just let me know and we'll touch on the next point. Okay. Just while we're waiting, are these little paper holders on the side? Yeah. The little, those, those, what are they doing? They're holding down that blue plate? Yeah, so the blue plate actually comes off. Okay. The reason for that is that it has a little fiberglass backing, and then the blue plate is actually a very adhesive surface for the plastic. And so what we need to do sometimes whenever we have a model on here is we, we can bend and move the plate in order to kind of pop it off. So if you can see okay. I like bending the plate as it goes. And so that would to do that. Hmm? Okay. Would you recommend I buy like multiple plates? I mean, do these things last long? Yeah, these things last a pretty long time. Like I've been using this and it was used before for test prints and it's still pretty nice. So um, this one's probably been used for close to like a couple months and it's still pretty nice. So, I mean, as long as I'm like digging stuff into it and stuff like that, yeah, they last a good while. So cool. Thank you. Yeah, and they're like $15 for the A5s if you need one, so they're really not that much. Um, okay. They do last a long time, and if you don't want to buy them, you can also use blue tape. Uh, it's just a little bit of an extra process kind of thing, because you have to lay the tape on there very flat and specific. So, Okay. Kind of just a heads up for that, for that question there. Thanks. Yeah, of course. All right, so I'm going to one more time, because I've been messing with my printer, just in case. Mine's centered, ready to go. Okay, and then we're going to go to disable motors. So that's also going to be in setup. And that way we can move the build plate back and forth and we can also move the extruder assembly. Because usually after you auto home it, it locks it so you can't move anything. Okay. So do I want to auto home it again? No, you should be good. So once you auto home and then hit disable motors, then we should be able to move it. We just don't want to move it up in the Z axis. That's what we okay. want to make sure was zero. So the next part we're going to kind of go over is there's three points on this build plate that we need to adjust and you're able to make it flat to the extruder head. And so that's that little guy that's like sitting in there that's really close to the build plate. For most of this process, I'm going to be moving my printer around a whole bunch. Um, for yours, we would like you to keep it on a table so you can level it appropriately. And then um, this is kind of just for demonstration to kind of give you the idea of what's going on. So. Okay. so for the first one, I like to go with the hardest just to get it out of the way. So right in here in between the screen and the build is going to be a little knob that you can adjust. Okay. And so that knob is going to go left and right. So if you go up, uh, Clockwise, it's going to go up. If you go counterclockwise, it's going to go down. I say clock up, count down. And so it makes it a little bit easier for me to remember. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is we want to move the extruder head or the little nozzle that's sitting and almost touching this build plate. We want to put it right above that knob. Okay. And then we want to slide the piece of paper in between the two. Okay. So we put the, put the nozzle right above the knob that's gonna adjust our build plate, and then we slide the piece of paper. And so if it's a little bit too tough to get through and you can't actually push it through, then what you can do is since this is actually on springs, you can push down on this in order to get it under. So this actually right. would move and bend, okay? So once you get it under, what we're looking for is a little bit of resistance between the nozzle head and the build plate. So we're trying to make it that kind of perfect area so that it lays on it, but it doesn't squish it out too flat, and it also isn't too far away that it doesn't stick. 
the resistance that we're looking for is if you were to put your finger on top of the piece of paper that you have and move it back and forth, you want to have it where you kind of feel that resistance, but you also don't buckle the paper and it can it isn't too loose. So that's just our kind of way of trying to explain how you're going to feel that. And it's very tension feel. So once you feel like it is happy with the tension, then you can move on to the next one. So remember, clock up, count down. So mine feels a little bit loose, so I'm going to go clockwise to move the build plate up. And I like that a lot more. So that feels more comfortable to me. You say you want me to push the board down? If you can't get the paper underneath the nozzle, you can push the board down, yes. Um, if, if you already have the paper under the nozzle, we just want to adjust the knobs until we get that resistance feel. And we're trying to make it so the nozzle, like if you were to take a thing of toothpaste and you hold it like really close to the toothbrush, what's going to happen to it? It's just going to like spray everywhere because it's flinging out of the toothbrush, right? If you have it, right. it's going to miss the toothbrush. It's going to like be stringy and fall around. But if you have it right, it becomes a nice bead on top of the toothbrush and allows us to actually stick it to it. And that's what we're trying to do here with our nozzle. Okay, I've, I've, uh, I've gone counterclockwise as far as I can go and it's still pushing down on it. So what do you mean it's pushing down on it? Like I can't slide my paper underneath it. Okay, um, can you show me your printer real quick? Just to help me view a little bit. So it's under the nozzle, yeah. But I have to like totally like jam it down. So go ahead and yeah, just uh, push in. Like you don't have to push too heavy, but you're gonna push in on the plate and then move the nozzle under it. And if it seems really far over here to the left, which it does, you can actually move that in and try and put it in the middle and then put the paper under it. So like move it to the middle of the build area and then you take it and you kind of push down here on the, on the outside and just kind of slide the paper up under. Okay. Did that help? I, I, maybe the other ones are just tied to. Yeah, it, it's possible that what's happening is that the build plate is really far up and it is making it really tight. Yeah. So my paper won't even move right now if I try to, unless I push the thing down. Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to leave it under there. As long as the paper is underneath it and maybe you can't move it. So here, I'll adjust mine so it's like yours. Well, I'm just on. Right, so if you look at mine, I can't move my paper, right? It's buckling and it's crippling and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And I try to move it, it's like pulling this. That's too tight, right? Right, that's way too tight. So what we want to do is we want to go, we want to go counterclockwise. So I'm going to spin it this way. Okay, now at the front of the printer, I'm going to spin it in this direction to make it go down. Basically, the clockwise you, is down? Counterclockwise is down. Yeah. So if you're like going righty tighty, that's going to make it pull down. Okay, so left is going to make it go up. Right. So if you loosen it, it'll actually give more to the build plate and it'll move it up. If you tighten it, it's going to bring the build plate down. Does that help you envision a little bit more? Yeah, I was going, I was going the wrong way like an idiot. Uh, no, don't worry about it. I, I did that like 6,000 times before I get it right. I promise, every time I level one of these printers, I end up doing the same thing. Like I go the opposite direction all the way and I'm like, why is it not working? <laughs> and then I realized. <laughs> So yeah, so we want to make sure that the nozzle is above that um, that knob here in the center, and then kind of make it to where it's, oh, that's a bit too tight. So it's like starting to buckle in that case. So I want it a little bit lower. Am I still too tight? Yeah, so this is like a process of elimination just going through it. And so you should be able to kind of like put a finger on the board and move it across the nozzle and it should, you should feel it kind of rub against it, but it's not like stopping it or it's not like completely loose. Yeah, like give me a second. I'll get it. Yeah, of course.
Now, right now, it's the side. The nozzle doesn't hit it, but it's the side of the box holding the nozzle. Does that mean my box isn't tight enough on here? The side of the box is, is hitting the paper? Yeah. So it, that's not tight enough on, right? Uh, so you're saying like this right here? Yeah. Yeah. Hitting the paper? Yes. Can you tilt your camera to look at it so that I can see it like sitting flat, the uh, printer? See like this edge right here? Oh man, yeah, okay. So I can go like this. Oh, the carriage is super loose. So is this, is this entire, like right here with these, is this moving? These wheels? Yeah, sometimes they're not even on. They're right. not even on the track. So what we can do, we can adjust that right now to fix it. And that's probably what our biggest problem has been here and why we can't really level it right. You look into your tool pack, which is going to look a lot like this. A place with, you know, little Allen wrenches and maybe a screwdriver. And we're going to grab what looks like this guy. Yeah, I got this guy. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to move the Z axis up. So we can either grab this back plate and we can move it manually. If you grab right here around the axis, see where my fingers are? And we push uh -huh. down move it up, we should be able to drag that up. Mine's locked, so I can't do that right now. How'd you unlock that? Disable motors. Again? Yeah, in case it isn't. If it's not working in that form, which mine seems to be mad at me, I, we can do it manually on the screen. So go ahead and click on controls. I did it, it's up. It's up? Okay, so I'm gonna move mine in a different way then. So I'm gonna click controls, move axis, and move the Z up. Because mine's being finicky. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little guy, Take that off. All we want to do is tighten the concentric nut that's inside of there. So right underneath here, and it's in between the carriage. So you see that there's one more wheel at the very bottom that you were adjusting. I take this and I move it. Towards the back. See it? You see this nut right in here? Yep. That's the one we want to tighten. So we can pull it out. We want to put our wrench on it, and we want to tighten that one up in order to cinch it on there. Okay. And so if you, yeah, if you move the build plate all the way forward and pull this one out and kind of hold it with your thumb on one, and then in that piece, and then go to the right to tighten it. Mm -hmm. Man, there's not a lot of room in this thing. There isn't. Yeah, that might help a lot. It's all good. I like a challenge. And I want to go clockwise on this, right? Yeah, you're going the right way. You got it. Good. Yep. I guess mine's really loose because it's got a long way to go, Phil. Oh, I'm sorry. We might be going the wrong way. Let me double check. I'm adjusting mine to... Go the opposite direction you're going. Apologies. So we want to go counterclockwise. Yes. So you want to take it and go in towards. So take it and go in towards this. Just tighten it. Oh no! No, 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 no! I'm sorry. I'm looking at it backwards from what I was. Yeah. Go away from the away from this. So if we twist it this way, it's going to tighten it. Okay. 
And so we don't want it to be super tight. So mine's a little bit too tight because mine was kind of like in a good spot already. So I'm just going to loosen it up just a bit. This is a concentric nut, and so that kind of helps to center that extruder assembly on it. And then leveling the build plate might actually work. <laughs> yeah. So is it feeling a little bit tighter? Yeah, it's getting there, but the wheel on the left, uh -huh. the cycle, the wheel closest to the 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 base or the pole, it's still, right. It's getting there, but it's still pretty loose off it. It shouldn't be loose, right? Is the wheel itself loose from the nut and bolt? There's just a gap. Yeah, then just keep tightening. Yeah, keep going on the tightening. And this is the only thing to do? Yep. That's the concentric nut that helps to tighten the carriage assembly. Make sure that this one isn't spinning when you're doing that. Yeah, that, yeah I noticed that. Because if that one's spinning, then we, uh, we have to hold it still so it can actually tighten itself. That still seems super loose. So there's also a nut inside of the assembly that you can look at right here. And it's like, if you look through these vent covers on this side, you should be able to, yeah. that. and it's possible that that is moving. I know, you see how loose mine is? Yeah. Is that right? I mean, Crazy, huh? Hold on, give me a second. Hey, Josh, can I get you to help me with this? Um, his assembly is loose, but tightening the concentric nut isn't like tightening it up. Uh, so, if you want to see how loose that is, though? That's really loose, too. I mean, it's getting tighter as the more I do it. Yeah, hi, this is Josh. Hey, Josh. So, the way those eccentric nuts work is you can, like, go past. So, you just want to keep kind of turning it. If you, and if yeah. you do a full rotation, then it's not going to work, and we got to try something different. But you have to go a full 360 to verify that. I've gone a couple times around, I feel like, by now. Yeah, I think, okay. he's, I think he's gone all the way. Yeah, it's not supposed to be that loose. He also said this seemed a little bit tilted. So when you receive this printer, did the box show any damage? I'm sorry? Was the box damaged when you received this printer? Was it crushed? No, I, I think it was fine. Yeah, so that's not going to work. You don't have to keep turning that nut if you don't want to. Um, all right, so in your... In your uh, toolkit that you have, you've got a couple Allen screws. Right. So you can actually loosen the Allen screws that are on the top of the carriage there. If you wanna. This one up here is the one you're gonna wanna loosen because it's the easiest one to get to. Uh, so you have to use that little crescent wrench you're holding, the small side, to uh, hold the lock nut on the back of it. Right. Loosen this one. And then uh, you should be able to slide it together, like you should be able to pinch it, and then there'll be just a little bit of uh, tolerance inside that, that, that screw hole in there. You should be able to pinch it together and close the gap, and then you can tighten that back up again. Yeah. Something looks bent. So uh, can you give me a, a view of your carriage like this, like a straight on, so I can see the this flat panel in the back? I want to see if something's bent. 
Like there? Uh, a little bit the other way. A little bit back. No, the other way. So I want to see a straight on view of the this this bracket, this flat bracket. Yeah, right there. So take a look at it for me because it looks like it might be a little bent. Make sure that the plate that this bottom screw is attached to, make sure that that's perfectly flat and it's not bent. Like what plate is it? The the plate that this whole assembly is attached to. The the all three wheels are attached to a single plate. And there's a little like yeah, looks, tab that supports that bottom wheel. Yeah, it looks pretty straight. Hmm. All right, so let's do this. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, you can get an Allen key and you can take these two screws off right here. And just leave that bolt alone. That bolt's fine for now. But you want to take a really. You, want me to tight you don't want me to tighten this one back up? No, just it's good. Just leave it for now. Okay. You take these two small screws off with uh, one of the smaller Allen keys. And this holds on this fan shroud. Okay. Yeah, it looks like this was damaged in shipping. So what I'm trying to do right now is just sort of verify what's wrong with it and see if it's something that you might be able to fix or whether or not we need to get this printer returned to our shop. Because there, there are too many loose components on this printer for me to not think that it wasn't just abused in shipping. Out. Yeah, so once you get those screws out, this, uh, this fan housing, this metal housing will come loose and it'll right. be cables that are still holding it in place. So you just move it to the side. It's okay if it dangles. It's not a big deal. Okay. And then you have two similar size screws on the extruder assembly right here. And you just take those loose and then that will reveal this bracket that we're trying to assess. Okay and we'll be able to work on it a lot easier. That's one good thing about these printers is they're pretty easy to disassemble and, and, and uh, fix. Yeah, for real. <clears throat> so, all right. And so once you get that extruder off of there, the whole thing's kind of wired together and you can move it off to the side out of the way. Now, also, I want to verify that that's not hot. Do you have any heat on that? No. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure. We haven't heated it. <laughs> I just walked in, so <laughs> I don't want to assume anything. My finger! <laughs> right. Oh, no! Blisters! Third degree burns! So, uh, <clears throat> this plate right here needs to be just like perfectly flat, including this little rounded portion. Like, and I mean perfectly flat. So, if it's at all bowed, then that's a problem. The bottom one might be bowed out a little bit. Right, so that's totally a problem. That's an easy fix. So what we can do is we can loosen these screws. You can take them all the way out if you want, but it's more of a pain. But it's a bigger Allen key, and it's the two screws that are holding this little bracket in place. And so you just loosen it, and then you can in and you can slide the belt off the end, kind of like this, and then it comes off. Okay. And you have these little, they're called T-nuts on the back of it. And so what you're doing when you loosen it is you're just allowing those to turn 90 degrees so they'll slide out of the slot. So just loosen them, don't pull them all the way off? Exactly. There you go. As long as it can jiggle, you're good. Now push it in towards the printer, and then you can slide the belt off the back of it. Okay. Yep, exactly like that. Slide it right out of there. Slide it right off the end. Like this off the end? There you go, yep. Now you can take this thing and the, the kind of loops and notches on the bottom of it, if you take a look, and you can pop the belt right off, like so. And then you can get the whole piece off, like that. So now we can bend this thing straight. And you should be able to take your thumb, bend push it, it, push it on the wheel potentially. 
Should I get like pliers and do that instead? If you've got pliers, pliers will work great too. Yeah. Here about this, this uh, these metal plates are really easy to bend. Okay. Sorry to hijack your training. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I was I was like stumped. I was getting stumped at a certain point. I was just like, so man, his pretty, carriage is way too loose. Yeah, so. it's pretty obvious that this has been tinkered. Well, somebody curved dropped or, the box real hard or, or yeah, something. something. And you said the so this can seem loose mm -hmm. if you're if you're wiggling it like this because the acrylic will flex across the plate here. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's rigid in relation to the frame, it's fine. It's fine. And the other thing that I noticed is that this portion, as he was messing with it, is just Seems wiggling a lot like that. Yeah. yeah. If that is pretty easy. It's but another it's, concentric knot, right? No. No, that one? It's actually not. We have to tighten this one in. Is that what that one is? The best way to do it is to remove the handle mm -hmm. and then loosen these two screws and push them down mm -hmm. and then tighten it back up. And then you can put it back on. But we're gonna see that's a non critical repair. Just fine without yeah, being without loose. It, yeah, so were you able to get that straight? Sorry? Were you able to get that straight? I think so. I mean, it looks a little better. All right, well, let's just test it out here. Just slide it on there and just see if it grips better before you worry about that belt. It looks like it might. Yeah, it goes way better now. Awesome. All right, so now you just tighten up everything. Just tighten up all those those block washers and stuff on the wheels that we loosened earlier. And everything should be nice and tight and snug, and it should just glide like that. That's what you're looking for. And then we'll go through the reassembly, which is pretty quick. And I want to talk to you about something else I saw in the video while we were working on this. It's sort of a, it's a non-critical repair. It's uh, something that you could just leave as is, but if you want to really increase the quality of your printer, it's something that you could tune. Okay. We'll get this taken care of before we talk about that. Yeah, I apologize about that. Sometimes the, uh, the UPS or the FedEx or whoever we end up sending it for, they just get a little, a little happy with our boxes and they just throw them around. And that's the hey, man. Yeah, happen. We try packing them as best we can. We got that expanding foam and everything, but yeah, I get I mean, it. We like to, we can't babysit them all the way to your school. <laughs> so yeah, so you can when you put it back on there, it's easier if you get the first belt onto okay. that slot first, and then you slide it <clears throat> onto the onto the track while you're okay. holding the end of the other one Pull it out like that because it has this little yeah it has a little end and the belt needs to go underneath the top wheels right. inside of the track so it's it's a little tight but but you can you get it through there just barely yeah and then you just wrap it around just like you're doing put it in that Cut, and then we'll just kind of reverse, except there's a special technique for tightening the belt. Here in a second. So what you do is you'll align your T-nuts so that they'll fit inside the slot like that. They'll just go straight in. Give me a second. And then you'll slip your belt over the end of the pulley, you know, just opposite exactly what we had done before. Yeah, just like that. It came out. Well, I mean, you could leave it out and put that piece on and then wrap it around it, like, you know, six one half dozen and the other. But make sure your T-nuts are in the slot before you get the, there you go, just like that. They have to go in that slot on the Yep. Tape? Yep, if you turn them so that they are in line with the slot, it'll just like, Pop straight in there. There you go, perfect. I just wrap it around like that, and then, yep, hook it up. All right, got it. Looks good so far from here. A little snug. 
Yeah, now we're good. All right. So what's, what you're going to do is you're going to take your Allen key, the one for these two T-nuts right here, or the two screws right here on the front that are attached to the T-nuts, and you push it in there, and you've got to, like, give it a spin, and you can tell that those T-nuts turn 90 degrees, and they look inside the channel. And you, you don't want to snug them up. You just want to get them so that they're set. And you'll feel it. You'll feel how this just doesn't really wobble up and down like it used to, because those T-nuts are taking the space inside the channel. Got but you. There, you grab any other Allen key. In this case, I'm just going to use that thin one we used for the other parts. And you stick it in between the nut and the, uh, the track here, and you pry on it. That it'll, it'll put tension on the belt. You know, doing that? Okay. Yeah, you just put it in there. Your, your other, yeah, your other Allen key. There you go. Put it in there, and you just pry out on that bolt that, that has got the pulley on it, just like that. And you put tension on your belt, and then you, then you go in and you snug these up. crazy <laughs> yeah it's pretty fun once you once you get into it uh learn all kinds of cool things with 3d printing <laughs> like tensioning belts and turning t-nuts and and all those other fun stuff that comes with 3d printing basic programming too if you're down for it <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah right you know for let me geez <laughs> So you just want to make sure there's enough tension on your belt that it, it isn't just like when you touch it, it doesn't feel loose-loose. Like it, it feels like you can maybe strum it a little bit. But you need it to be just like cinched down, like super tight. It looks good. Yeah, it looks good to me. What you're trying to avoid is what they call belt slap. And that's where your belt is just loose enough that it will actually you see. No, that's just motion. So you want to make sure your belt isn't like flapping down when you move side to side because then some of your motion is going into the up and down direction and so that means that axis will actually lag a little bit. So is that not tight enough? It looks smooth to me. Just make sure you, touch it, you feel like actual tension on the belt so you can touch it right here. Is that slapping a little bit or not? A little. Not a little bit. So, so go in right here. Try this. Right here between the belt and the nut and the bracket like inside this little hole right here get some leverage on it you see what I'm talking about you want me to push the belt down in there no you want to just put your allen key in there and use it to pry right and then you can loosen your your t-nuts some more so that it's it's movable and then you can sometimes I'll do it like this I'll hold the allen key with my finger down low and I'll pull on it with my thumb so I kind of do a push-pull sort of leverage and that gives me the ability to, to really tighten down that belt Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. It's just a miniature. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I wasn't understanding at first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not a super easy way to describe it, but we're just prying on it. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. There's more tension in there now. There you go. Perfect. All right, so the rest of it's easy. We just got to put in those four four screws we took out earlier, and then you're you're set. We'll talk about that other thing, and then I'll give it back to Michael and shape. So I don't know if you remember, but the long screws go into the the red portion of the hot end. I do portion of the hot end is called the heat sink. It is what wicks away the heat before it gets up too high and starts melting your filament before you're ready to print with it. So sometimes it's a little tricky to get it aligned. What's up, yeah? They're teaching me how to do this. Your hair's all red now. That's good. Yeah. That was just partially done before, right? 
Those are just partially done before, right? Like it. I can tell by how quickly you're fixing this, you're going to have some fun with 3D printing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been excellent so far. He's been falling through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this second little screw on the side always gives me hassles. Yeah. It's because you got to align this fan housing and it doesn't always want to line up because it's stamped. Mm. There we go. Now everything's tied, everything's smooth, everything's back together. We're all back there. Yeah, that's a lot better. Awesome. All right, so what I wanted to discuss with you is this portion right here. Do you see how I'm wiggling my printer? Yeah. That's not supposed to be the case. All right. That's supposed to have it be that way. Now, that's not a critical, your prints are all going to fail type issue because gravity is going to hold it in a specific position and it's probably going to maintain that position as it prints. But there's always the option or the, the possibility that it could get bumped or shook and then it would slightly change the position of the nozzle relation to the rest of the print. And then you end up with anomaly, like a layer skip or something like that. You could cause a print fail. So the way to fix that is something that you could work on uh, in your own time, whenever it's convenient for you. Just use your long Allen key and you put it in through the top and you remove the handle. Then you lift this whole gantry off of that vertical piece. And you'll just loosen these two screws, two screws here, and yeah. you just push them as far this way as you can. And normally what I do is when I take it off, I'll hold it so that these are on top and then I'll just push down on them with my thumbs and I'll tighten them while I'm pushing down on them with my thumbs. And that just orients them as far as they can be inside the holes. There. Did I lose you? You still there? I think, uh, I think you're frozen. Are you still there? Can you hear me? His pings, right? Okay. Might be a... So you're gonna come back? 